welcome to David Rice, Thank my you. old friend. We're here today to talk about Bible prophecy. Yes. The thing I want to start with is the most basic issue, and that is the ability to foretell the future appears to be something unique to God. That's something that he claims for himself. Yeah. And uh, Jesus even does not claim to have the ability to know the future. Well, on one occasion, he says, not even the Son of Man knows that day and hour. Right. And I am confident that the passage in Revelation 5, which talks about the slain lamb entering into, the, into heaven, is able to open the scrolls, un, unleash, unseal the scrolls. Maybe that is the moment when he himself is uh, able to perceive the future for the first time along with God. Do you, is that, do you agree with that? It's an engaging option. I think those seven seals actually contain judgments for the future. Uh, more than just time indicators for the future. Okay. But it is certainly true that when Jesus ascended to the right hand of God, things that he didn't know before surely would have been privileged to see at that point. Right. So I do agree that Jesus is in a different position now than when he said that when he was on earth. Right. And so if he says, this, no one knows, not even the Son, when the day and hour of the future uh, Messiah's reign be, will happen, he didn't mean that he wouldn't know now. Right. He certainly knew after he was reunited with God in, right. in heaven. Okay, so be, all that, be that as it may, the ability to foretell is given to humans on occasion in the scripture. So talk about why that is. The prophets were given the opportunity on certain limited occasions to have limited information about things to happen in the future. It wasn't like an unlimited ability, you know, to see. Right. But, uh, so Moses, for example, he stood before Pharaoh, and he told him, tomorrow, at this time, there's going to be a plague of hail such as Egypt has never known. Yeah. Now, I don't know, did he see the darkening of the sky? <laughs> but, <laughs> not so much, because Pharaoh wouldn't have known that. There's a one-day prophecy, and it came about just as he predicted. Right. Pharaoh, that God knew what was going on. He was in control, and he was managing the situation. And then in 2 Kings, there's the account of Elisha. Uh, talk about that one. Yeah, Elisha was in the city with the king and in Samaria, and they were being sieged by an enemy outside. Looked pretty hopeless. And the price of food skyrocketed, as it would in a period of siege. And Elisha said, about Tomorrow, about this time, a measure of wheat will be sold for a single shekel and two measures of barley. And the king's right-hand man said, that's, 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 that's not possible. He says, because you don't believe. You will see it with your eyes, but you won't taste of it. Huh. And sure enough, two of the lepers from Israel went out and decided, well, we, we're going to die here. We might as well go out, and if, the worst they can do is kill us. So they went out to the camp to turn themselves in, the camp of the enemy. They found the enemy deserted because the enemy had been caused by God to hear the sound of chariots and a large army. It didn't really happen. But they thought it happened, and so they just ran off in panic, and they left the camp and all their supplies. So these, uh, these beggars, these, uh, these uh, lepers, they said, well, we've we got to report this good news. They yeah, yeah I, what I liked about that was that they said, um, we can't just keep all this loot for ourselves. Right. The people need this food. Right. And so, after they kept a few pieces of gold hidden away and whatnot, they went in and told the whole camp about the food. Right. So they yeah. all rushed out, of course, and, you know, the people just, wow, look at all this abundance. And indeed, a measure of wheat sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel. And as the people were rushing to the gate with all their treasure, the man of the king, who had disputed that such a thing could happen, he saw it, he was trampled to death in the gate of the king, never got to eat it, the, mess, the, the prophecy came out just as Elisha had predicted, right. the very time and the very circumstances. Now, of course, that's, you know, in the Old Testament, that's something you read, and the skeptic would say, well, how do we know it really happened that way? Right. So sometimes prophecies are given with a longer-range picture so that we can double-check and we can have the verity of the fulfillment. Right, which is actually a credit to the value of skepticism. It's like saying, I agree, you need to have an opportunity to double check this. Maybe after you've done a few of these and seen that it worked, maybe you'll then look back at some of the ones that you can't check 
and just have to take the Bible's word for and say, hmm, that is interesting. That's right. It's a good foundation for our faith. Right. Request. Okay, good. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 